Take it away, sir. I'm Zan Rush, <laughs> and I'm 17 years old, and this is my transition speech. Okay. So, the past. When I was younger, I was born in Blue Hill, Maine, and I moved to Franklin, Maine. And uh, in Franklin, baseball is a really big component of life. So I played baseball for a while. I played t-ball, and then I played farm league, and then I played little league. And in little league, I decided that I wanted to be a professional baseball player. I wanted to play for the Red Sox, and I had this kind of planned out in my head. I wanted to either be a catcher or a designated hitter. And so, um, that, like as time progressed, I kind of figured that wouldn't be a very smart idea because I wasn't that interested in baseball. And so I wasn't going to try to make a career out of something I didn't really like. Um, so then as I progressed, I got into football because we got a football league that we could join at my school. And so then I wanted to be a f professional football player and I wanted to play for the Patriots. And that sounded like a really cool deal. Um, and then I got to middle school and got really into science. And so at that point, I was really um, inspired by Isaac Newton and his laws of gravity. I really wanted um, to kind of like be like him. He was my major inspiration. And then I kind of lost interest in that. And that leads to my interview. I interviewed my grandfather, who is a naval officer and a merchant marine. He was in the Navy for 20 years. And um, so when I asked him what inspired him to pick his career path, he told me that it was pretty much um, his entire life was just leading up to um, that. Because he always would, um, at family gatherings, he would hear these stories of um, all of his family and everyone around him was going to see. And he would, um, when he was really young, he would get tired of these stories and uh, they'd just drag on at the dinner table and he'd want to sleep or leave. And I really related to this because um, I would um, sometimes be like that. I'd doze off at the table when stories were being told. And much like him, I, be um, I kind of started to become interested in these stories, especially the ones that he told because he would tell these stories about when he was at sea and when he was overseas that were so interesting because they, he never like, told the same story twice. It was always something different. Um, like a few weeks ago, he told me about a story when he performed an appendicitis um, in the middle of uh, the Atlantic Ocean. And I thought that was incredible because I'd never even heard of that before. Uh, so that was just... Um, it, it wasn't even, it was back when I was even younger than a few weeks ago that I thought it, like, that was kind of the adventurous kind of lifestyle I wanted to have. So in the summers when I was younger, uh, we, my family would sail on his boat. He owns a schooner in Blue Hill. And so he taught us to sail on that. We would, uh, my brother and I would play on the rigging and We'd fish for mackerel, and we'd make names for islands that we passed. And sometimes we'd go on the islands and play on them, and kind of pretend we were overseas. And that was always really fun, and that um, that kind of is when my interest in the maritime industry really was sparked. And so when I was about ten, my grandfather and my grandmother paid for me to go to a sailing camp in Blue Hill, where I learned to sail opties. And I thought that was incredible because you're in the boat on your own, and that was the most in, like the most independence I've ever I had ever had at the time, and so it was an incredible experience, and that's when I really wanted to start doing more things on the ocean, and so um, a little like a little bit after that, my grandparents bought a lake house, and they always had boats on the lake house or on the lake that we could, my brother and I could just take out and we learned some about freshwater fishing and stuff like that. And so it was just a lot of um, times in the summer that we would end up either on the boat or on the lake. And that was um, just a really good pastime for us. And it really inspired us to kind of stay close to the ocean. And so these times in the summer, they kind of gave me the will to travel, the will to explore. and. Um, I wanted to be like my grandfather and have as many stories as he had. And 
So that's why I chose to interview him. So this year, rather than sailing, I did, oh, yeah. Rather than sailing, I did, uh, or rather than baseball or track, I did sailing. I joined the sailing team. And because I <coughs> thought that I should do something that I'm interested in um, career-wise, something that is uh, related to the maritime industry. And I thought it was incredible. It was more fun than any other sport I've ever participated in. So I think that's a pretty good sign. Um, so, um, and also my summer job, that pertains to the ocean because I got a job at a boatyard. So I will be um, uh, taking boats out to moorings and also out to islands. And I'm going to learn a lot about the industry. And so that should give me some very good perspective on um, like what I think of the industry. So, the future. I have some criteria for like what I want to do or what I want in a career. Um, it's important, as I already said, that it involves traveling because I want to be all over the world. I want to see the world and um, just go all over overseas. And that being said, I want my career to be um, in the pursuit of a worthy cause. Um, I want to travel, but I want to do it with purpose. So I want to be traveling for a job or for um, something that I think is a worthy cause. Okay. And um, one of the most prominent career choices um, I see myself making would be going into the merchant marines, which is um, I would be shipping overseas and um, in kind of boats like that, ships like that, shipping cargo, uh, things like that. Uh, in my interview with my grandfather, he said that the greatest sacrifice he had to make was leaving home for such a long period of time. Because in this industry, most companies will have you ship out for four months, and then you'll come home for four months, and then you won't have any work for those four months, but then you'll have to leave again for four months. So making that kind of sacrifice can be hard, um, but he always told me that it was worth it because he knew he was doing something important. Another option would be to go into the Navy. Um, this has a lot of similarities to the Merchant Marines because there is a lot of time spent away from home. Um, that being said though, job security is very excellent in the Navy. Um, it, if I were to go into the Navy, I would join the um, NROTC program, which stands for the Navy Reserve Officer Training Corps. Um, it trains people to go into fields such as aviation, submarines, surface warfare, special operations, special warfare, or the Marine Corps. Oh, dear. So um, those are all very interesting to me. And uh, coming from that program, the NROTC program, you would um, be able to start out at a, um, as an officer. Rather than being enlisted, you wouldn't be in a, a position of that kind of power. Um, and another option would be to work in local harbors um, on tugs or ferries. Um, this option isn't as appealing to me because you wouldn't be traveling around as much as you would be if you were a merchant marine. You, um, but through this kind of career option, you could become a pilot, which um, is essentially a person who um, stays grounded at one harbor and they take incoming ships into the harbor and they take um, outbound ships out of the harbor safely. Um, they're required to know just about everything about the harbor, the depths, all of that stuff, just to, um, to make sure that the ships avoid disaster. Um, and so all of these career options can be achieved through degrees from Maine Maritime Academy. Uh, these, uh, there are programs for shipping out um, as a merchant marine, as well, um, as well as ones for driving boats of smaller tonnage, such as ferry boats. Um, and also there is, a NRO, there is a NROTC program there in which students are trained to become naval officers um, and um, they can be commissioned upon graduation. Um, the program I would most likely select here would be the Marine Systems Engineering Program which um, it typically takes people five years to complete, which is, um, it's a year more, but it, is, it sets you up in a very, um, very good position 
because from there you can become um, a chief engineer by logging sea time. Uh, um, it requires three training cruises, which would happen over the summer, and which are 90 days each. And you, um, so you ship out with other students from Maine Maritime Academy, and uh, you travel all over the world. Um, I think they stop normally in three ports. Um, I don't know if they're all foreign though. Um, another program would be the Marine Transport, uh, the Marine Transportation Operations major. Um, this would license me to be a third mate on any ship with any tonnage. And so um, much like the engineering track, there's room for um, like moving up the ladder towards captain, but you have to log um, sea time like that to improve your license. So uh, this program only requires two training cruises and it would only take four years to complete. Um, for both of these options, I would be required to go on a co-op in which I would have to ship out with an associate company with the academy. These, these will show me whether or not I want to ship out all over the world or, uh, or stay based in one port. So, yeah. Do you have any questions? that and like I didn't like baseball a lot and I also wanted to be on the water as much as possible. Mr. Eden. Um, what are the dangers involved in a possible career of being a marine systems engineer? Uh, there are lots of dangers. Um, there's the danger of being lost at sea. Um, there's the danger of, um, I mean, the reason there are pilots are to keep people off of um, shoals and rocks, but um, there aren't pilots for everywhere in the ocean, so there are dangers of running aground and things like that. Um, like the El Faro um, ship which sank oh, last year, that uh, it went into a storm. I believe. So it's um, definitely a risk to um, go into a, a career like that. How do you reconcile that? Like, how do you come to terms with that? Um, well, I believe that, um, I mean, it's kind of like driving a car. You know, it's things like that do happen, but I mean, it, it's just a risk you take. You ever, you ever read much maritime literature, like old sailing stories? And I read Moby Dick and The Old Man and the Sea. Yeah? Yeah. Cool. There's a lot of good marine literature out there. Mm -hmm. do you, and do you know Emma Strong? Yeah. Do you know her dad? Skip? Yeah. Do you know what he does? He's a pilot, yeah. Have you ever talked to him about that? I haven't. He'd be a good person to talk to. Mm -hmm. You guys know Emma's dad? Mm -hmm. Know what he does? Abby? Yeah. It's pretty cool actually. If you go on YouTube, there's a bunch of videos of him like hopping on board uh, big, big vessels and hopping off of them. And hopping off of them, yes. Yeah. Onto a lobster boat. He has like a lobster boat, basically. It's a kind of a neat thing. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks, Dan. Yep.